Hello, I'm Dr. Yuan. In today's talk, I'm going to introduce the extracritic algorithm in deep reinforcement learning. Okay, let's firstly recap. In deep reinforcement learning, agents observe the environment to gather states, and based on that, make actions to change the environment to new states. At the same time, it can get send a reward as a feedback to agent. Then the agent will learn something to make better action based on the experience. We have introduced two kinds of approaches before. That is value-based algorithm and policy-based algorithm. In the value-based algorithm, the agent only need to learn value functions to evaluate how good the action make based on the states. And it makes a specific policy, which can, uh, for example, is the most easy one is gradient policy, like maximum the Q value. It uh, commonly used in DQN or Q-learning. Q and another one is policy-based algorithm. This one no need learning value function. It only need to learn policy. Uh, for example, here we uh, introduced two. One is static policy. It learns the probability of distribution over the actions. And other one is deterministic policy. It only make only one action at one time. Into this talk, I'm going to introduce another one called actual critic algorithm. It include is a hybrid algorithm which include value based and policy based algorithm. In today's talk, I will firstly introduce why ectocritic is needed. And next, I will introduce what is ectocritic from architecture and training. Next uh, is the variance and the extension from the basic ectocritic algorithm. In some examples, as we introduced before, that value this algorithm have challenges in searching the continuous action space. Uh, and besides policy-based uh, algorithm, it has high variance or high variance, which quite depends on the searching trajectory. So, actor critic is proposed to solve these two problem as it can combine the advantage of these two algorithms. So, it first can stable the training by reducing the uh, variance. And also, it can support the continued action space. Let me first introduce the architecture of the actor critic. Here, I use the Super Mario game to illustrate it. First, the agent is Mario. It can, uh, here we have two parts. One is called actor. The job of actor is to decide action based on the observation. So, the Mario here is the action to control the gamepad and to let uh, Mario make action like jump or uh, down, uh, go down or go back or forward. Then uh, the, there's another one called Critic. It's based on the coins of the life left to make uh, to describe how good this action is. So the actor quite like the policy-based approach make actions. And the critic is the value-based approach to evaluate how good the performance based on the state and action. Deep neural networks are popular to be used to approximate the function of value and the policy function. Here we use the Mario games as cases to analyze it. The actor network and creator network we can see is used in neural network too. Uh, approximate. And the uh, actor held the uh, states as input and make action as output. Here we can say that is a static policy. And for the critic, it takes states and actions as input and give the value to say how good this action based on the states. Okay, next we see the progress of actor critic. Uh, so it, uh, it includes two parts. One is execution, one is training. Let's from, start from the execution. So for the first time, at each time, the agent observed the environment to get the states. 
and the state go to the policy network is which is actor network then it make actions and change the world and to get the reward it's quite similar before uh, as we discussed before in during this uh, interaction with the environment the agent can get the experience here we said it is state action reward and the next states this state this data will be used for training so let's see how they train it after collecting data the agent need to update their new networks including actor and also critic so next step the critic takes states and action from this collected data and as input and calculate the kill values then the actor based on the Q value to update their parameter theta. Here we give the function with policy gradient for static policy. Here we see the gradient depends on the learning rate, which usually is set by the experts in the ones. It's kind of hyperparameter. And also the gradient over the log function over for the policy, uh, static policy and also the value functions, which means with this gradient, the agent would be prefer make action that with higher values. Then the critic also update with the, for the parameter omega. Here we say it, dip, uh, it need to calculate the TD arrows and the gradient of value functions. And TD arrow, TD arrow is quite important that depends on the reward we can see from also from the data collected by agent and then estimated the next step q value function and the current q value function to see how how many gap between of the q value estimated there's many algorithm based on the actor critic to uh, realize the training of agent here we compare on policy versus op policy. The main difference of them is the way calculate the TD arrow. Here on policy, they, ask, uh, they use the newest uh, neural network on policy to calculate the next, even the next step of the Q value. So it need to wait the neural network of policy update and then calculate the Q value one by one, step by step. Of policy, on the other hand, is calculate uh, the Q of next state with the target policy, which means it can be estimate. For example, here we show the easiest one, they just use max of the current state, current Q value to estimate the next step, which means it no need to wait the policy network to update one by one step by step. It can use the previous one or even the one in long time ago. Next, we compare online training versus offline training. The main difference is that offline training we decide a buffer there to install the all the data or memory collected by the agent when they interact with the environment and when the update they not uh, they don't update one by one experiments they catch the the sampled experiments in batch like 10 or ten, uh, like thousands or millions experienced from the buffer to update for one time so the difference here we set a uh, some function and uh, to get out the batch and to get average value over the uh, gradient or the loss function. Okay, based on my basic introduction over the actor critic, we know that the this actor critic approaches are value based plus policy based approach, which has very obvious advantage in stabilization the training by reducing the variation. Also, they can support the continual action space. Here we show two cases. One is uh, given by OpenAI is hide and find the game. And the agent need to search the continuous space and make action like moving and pushing the box to the places. And the enemy need to learn how to find the guys or how to uh, 
break the doors. You can say after training many slots, they learn something how to find and hide. Another case is from the StarCraft 2. The agent uh, need to work together to fight against the enemy. You can see the left bottom one is the obstruction over the states. That's it. Then after many training, they need to learn how to fight against. Also, their searching and movement space are quite uh, complicated complicated and also in continual space. Then give a conclusion over today's talk. Firstly, I introduce what is actor critic. It's basically value-based plus the policy-based approach. So from the architecture, it includes actor critic as two main components. The advantage is stable, lies the training, also support continuing action space. For the training, I introduced how the uh, policy gradient be used to actor and TD arrows for critic updates. And there are many versions, variants like online policy, offline policy, online learning, and uh, offline learning. Okay, so next talk, I will talk about the challenges in actor, also in actor critic, and how many. Uh, other approaches or algorithm can fight against the challenges like DDPG or the A2C or A3C. Yeah, thank you for your listening and see you next time.